Hi, I'm Jim Broad with Cyber Recon. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Plan of Action and Milestones, or POAM document. The POAM is one of the critical documents that's part of the authorization packet for the risk management framework. In the following slides, we'll go over the basics of what goes into the POAM, how to keep it updated and maintained. As we get started, it would be important to know what exactly a POAM is. POEM is a plan of actions and milestones for an information system or even a common control set. According to OMB, a POEM, also referred to as a corrective action plan, is a tool that identifies tasks that need to be accomplished. It details resources required to accomplish the elements of the plan, any milestones in meeting the task, and scheduled completion dates for the milestones. The purpose of the POEM is to assist agencies in identifying, assessing, and pr prioritizing and monitoring the progress of corrective efforts for security weaknesses found in programs and systems. Well, that's really a mouthful. All a POEM really is, is the plan to fix the deficiencies that were uncovered during either a security assessment of the system, uh, an audit of the system, an inspection of the system, or just through continuous monitoring. It's that plan that's going to allow you to fix the deficiencies found and make the system more secure. You might ask, what exactly is OMB? OMB is the Office of Management and Budget, and through its memorandum M0201 from October 17th, 2001, many common definitions and structure of the POAM have been developed. Now that we know what the POAM is, who actually uses the POAM? POAMs are used by chief information officers, program officials, and other appropriate agency employees to track the progress of corrective actions. It's used by inspector generals to perform follow-up work with the agencies. It's also used by OMB to assist in the oversight responsibilities and inform the budget process. The uh, format of, of the POEM is important as well. OMB has determined that agencies should use a spreadsheet type format for the initial POEMs. And at a minimum, these agencies' POEMs must contain the information found in M-02-01. Each program and system and common control set where weaknesses was identified should have its own POAM. And because the information in these plans will be sensitive, agencies should submit the POAMs to OMB on a disk uh, in a format like Microsoft Excel. And since uh, M0201 was published in October of 2001, technology has obviously changed. The disk reporting has been replaced by some cloud type uh, systems in many cases, and there's different ways to exchange the information from the POAMs besides doing this on a diskette. This will be dependent on your agency and how this setup is between that agency and OMB. The following slides explain how the POAM should be completed. One example of a POAM finding for a system deficiency will be covered in the presentation, illustrating the appropriate level of detail required to meet the requirements of M0201. Once the agency has completed the initial POAM, no changes should be made in columns 1, 5, 6, and 7. You'll also note that column 4 should not be changed after filling that out as well. The heading of each POAM should include the unique project identifier, from exhibits 353 where these are applicable. It's important to note that as we detail the instructions for each of the columns that this information was taken directly from M0201. Column 1 will define the type of weakness. OMB details that you should describe the weakness identified by the Annual Program Review, IG Independent Evaluation, or any other type of work done on the behalf of the agency. Sensitive descriptions of specific weaknesses 
are not necessary, but sufficient data must be provided to permit oversight and tracking. Where it is necessary to provide more sensitive data, the POEM should note the fact of its special sensitivity. Where more than one weakness has been identified, agencies should number each individual weakness as shown in the examples. On this slide, you'll see a lock in the upper right corner that indicates that this column, once completed, should not be changed. It's important to note that many agencies will assign a sensitivity level or even a classification to the POAM due to the sensitive information that will be detailed in it once complete. If we think about the POAM, the POAM will describe every weakness that could be exploited in the identified information system. Adversaries or attackers would love to have this information to start their attack. Column two identifies the point of contact uh, where you will identify the office or organization that the agency head will hold responsible for resolving the weakness. Column three defines the resources required to fix a deficiency. According to OMB, this is defined as estimated funding resources required to resolve the weakness, including the anticipated source of funding, i.e. within the system or as part of a cross-cutting security infrastructure program, include whether the reallocation of base resources or a request for new funding is anticipated. This column should also identify other non-funding obstacles and challenges to resolving the weakness, like lack of security personnel or expertise, development of a new system to replace insecure legacy systems, etc. Column four is the scheduled completion date. The scheduled completion date for resolving the weakness. Please note that the initial date entered should not be changed. If a weakness is resolved before or after the originally scheduled completion date, the agency should note the actual completion date in column nine, which is status. As I noted earlier, this was not called out as one of the locked columns in OMB uh, 0201, but in this instruction, it's indicated that this should not be changed once entered. Column five is milestones with completion dates. Key milestones with completion dates. A milestone will identify specific requirements to correct an identified weakness. Please note that the initial milestone and completion date should not be altered. If there are any changes to the milestones, the agency should note them in column seven, changes to milestones. It's important to note that I believe this is an error. Column six is actually changes to milestones. And with this discrepancy in the alignment of the locked columns would identify why the column four was not indicated as locked in the instructions. Column six indicates changes to milestones. This column would indicate new completion dates for the particular milestone. And as these changes would be occurring throughout the system's life cycle, one could assume that this column should be changed. Column seven is used to identify how the weaknesses was discovered. According to GAO, the agency should identify the source of the weakness, weaknesses that have been identified as a material weakness, a significant deficiency, or other reportable condition in the latest agency inspector general audit under the applicable law, including financial systems audit under the Financial Management Integrity Act should be noted. If yes is reported, also identify and cite the language from the pertinent audit report. Basically what this column will identify is where the weakness was identified. This could also be a security assessment as part of the authorization process. Column eight will identify the status of the finding. The agency should use one of the following terms to report the status of corrective actions, ongoing or completed. 
Completed should be used only when the weakness has been fully resolved and the corrective action has been tested. This should also include the date of completion. In the following example, we will complete a line identifying a weakness in a system using the instructions provided by OMB. System information should be identified in the POEMS header. Items include project ID, project name, the system acronym, uh, the quarter of the POEM report, the current physical year, and the accreditation date. As you can see in this example, we'll be looking at project ID J24, which is project name HR Record System with an acronym of HRRS. The quarter is D or is indicated the fourth quarter of the current fiscal year 2015 with an accreditation date to be determined, which means this system more than likely has not been authorized or accredited. For this example, the finding will be uncovered during a security assessment for the HR record system conducted on July 15, 2015. We'll be looking at one individual weakness identified in this slide, which is uh, B1, PS, which is PS4, account termination. It looks like the account termination process is not functioning correctly in this agency. We will use some of the information contained in this vulnerability write-up to start our poem. As we start our entry, we see the eight column headings identified in OMB M0201, and the yellow color indicates those colors that that memorandum has specified to be locked. Obviously, we see the changes to milestone is indicated as yellow, and a case that I think should be actually changed, and the scheduled completion date should be actually yellow. But in this case, we will leave them as they are as we fill out the initial line of the poem. From our SAR, we see our finding V1 PS4, uh, inadequate account termination process. Let's continue filling out the information for the weakness identified in the SAR. On this initial line, we see that we are still working with V1, which is PS4. Our point of contact has been identified as a Mr. John Smith. And for resources required, it looks like we'll need an HR specialist for eight hours and the policy team for 24 hours to correct this deficiency. Also in this column, we could use direct funding, especially if equipment or outside personnel are used just to determine how much resources will be used to fix this problem. The scheduled completion date looks like it's going to be August 14th of 2015, and milestones along the way will be the draft document will be complete on the 31st of July, staff will review this by the 7th of August, and the update will be published by the 14th of August. Obviously, at this point, we don't have any changes to milestones, and we determined that this was not uh, identified in the CFO audit or other review. A good thing to indicate in this column also would be where it was discovered, which was not done in this case, uh, which would be uh, indicated by in inserting SAR in this column, and the status is ongoing. Well, it looks like something went wrong and we won't meet our scheduled completion date. In this case, it looks like the staff preview won't be complete on time, slipping the program to the right. So as we know, we can't change the scheduled completion date, but we do need to change some of the milestones. So in this case, we would update information in the changes to milestone column, including the staff review date, which is now August 14th, and the new published date, which is August 21. The status continues to be ongoing. We have finally completed mitigating this problem. And in this case, we have had the documents updated and a retest of the system done for this specific vulnerability at least. And a completed status of August 21st has been indicated in the status column. 
At this point, it can be indicated that this deficiency has been closed out or completed, but this line item will remain on the poem. Cyber Econ LLC is a Virginia-based veteran-owned business that provides information assurance, information security, risk management, and training services to organizations in government and commercial environments. For more information on the Risk Management Framework, or RMF, refer to Risk Management Framework, a lab-based approach to securing information systems.